Well, I guess uh, we're not going to have a great audience today, uh, live anyway. Uh, it's 2.32 on this clock up here. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Recreational Facilities Advisory Board meeting for March 18th. Uh, our meetings are web streamed and uh, uh, please silence your phones. Uh, I don't have any opening remarks today to uh, speak of uh, other than uh, Curacao is lovely and uh, the, uh, the, the meeting uh, with the, uh, uh, our provincial MPP and uh, his staff uh, will discuss uh, at the uh, discussion session uh, at the end. Uh, disclosure of pecuniary, pec that's gonna be a tough word today, pecuniary interest. Uh, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? I'll start, I have none. None to declare. None. 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 Perfect. Approval and a changes to the agenda. Are there any changes? Uh, JJ. Yeah, one change uh, under 4A, we have energy efficiency uh, presentation. Yes. Uh, myself, and I just wonder if we could maybe move that as item F on the agenda, and I'll just give an update. There is no no presentation. That's just a miscommunication. Sorry. Okay. Uh, any uh, anything else? Uh, go ahead, Ian. Let me start over again. No, I heard you fine there, Ian. Um, no one else is wearing hearing aids like me, so you're okay. We, we, uh, we, we did have an attachment here. I guess the attachments are no longer on here. Yeah, I just reprinted the uh, Facebook. Okay. Has everybody got the attachments but me? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I did. Uh, I did try and include that in the uh, the list of uh, items there. So, we'll uh, we'll raise that up Ian, and we'll make sure that we uh, get that added when we're discussing your your list there of uh, uh, project management uh, requirements. <clears throat> Thanks. Any other changes to the agenda? Okay, uh, do we need a motion to approve it? Okay, I need a motion to approve the agenda then with the amendments. Brian, and seconded by Ian, all in favor? Carried. Okay, uh, we'll skip the uh, energy efficiency presentation by JJ, and uh, move into the discussion items, project tools. So we uh, need some, uh, some tools to get this uh, project really moving there and uh, Ian has been doing uh, yeoman's work for all of us kind of uh, pulling on his uh, experience and uh, really giving us uh, a, a lot to think about. Uh, uh, Ian I'll uh, hand it over to you to uh, discuss the uh, project management software initially if you would. Thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, really um I think everybody got a copy of my memo back on March the 7th. I tried to give some perspective and background to why I thought it was important to have either work or project management software. And I gather you had contacted Mr. Creedlin, who indicated that the county did not have any such software. The item as I see it, this is a very complex project uh, from what I gather from the background work I've done to date. Uh, it involves, um, it's large, it's complex, and uh, it requires that all parties work in a timely and responsible manner. And that's really to ensure that we seldom lapse in obtaining information, getting data, uh, answers, etc. And all of that's related to timing. And there needs to be, in my opinion anyway, a central uh, depository for all of this information. 
Now there is software out there. Uh, Smartsheet, for example, is reasonably good. Uh, the cost, I don't have the cost right here, uh, but I indicated in that uh, document or that memo I sent that maybe should have a license for at least 20 people. Now, the whole aspect of that is that if we're going to work on this project in concert, and I know we're under some sort of restrictions because of the um, protocol involved, we can't just simply meet whenever we want as a large group, but we've got to make sure that everybody is up to date as possible. And if we're only meeting here once a month, that's a lot of time in between uh, that gaps occur. And that all, in my opinion, relates to time lost. Now, again, um, if the county doesn't have software, the question is whether or not it's applicable. Uh, there's learning curves with various softwares. Smartsheet, for example, learning curve is nowhere near a uh, project management, the uh, Microsoft project is, and it is more robust, in my opinion. But Anyway, I thought I'd lay that out uh, for consideration, and I thought perhaps the, you know, the county IT folks could even look at it for something that they could potentially get staff involved with in the long term. Um, but anyway, I will leave it at that. Uh, and if there's any discussion, I hopefully try to answer some questions. Well, I did, okay, file sharing for at least 20 people, which I already said, document collaboration, user access and permissions, and of course that relates to the fact that you may have 20 people, but you may not want all 20 people to have access to the comp certain confidential information, and that can be done. Search features, self-explanatory, uh, uh, API integration with application program integration, uh, interface integration, and that's simply we use it all the time. The analogy I would use, I said, if you went into a restaurant and your wife and you sat down and looked at the menu, oh, yes, yeah, okay, I want to order this, but you know there's a kitchen that's going to cook it. The API is the waiter. That's the connection. That's a very simple explanation. Um, and we use it all the time. Reporting and dashboards. Again, dashboard is good because it's, again, a communications tool that anybody can access, public in included. Customization, Dropbox integration, people know about that, time management. And it should be able to create a platform to manage all activities and tasks and team members from one place. That is key. Uh, so there's one source. And it should also be easily accessible for both computers and mobile devices. So that it, you know, we're all able to work together, get the information, feed it, extract it as we need it. So again, that's about it, Mr. Chairman. JJ? Yeah, I just wonder uh, for those around the table who sit on the council, is there a budget set aside for some of this preliminary work? Through the chair, and Mr. Kudlin can correct me, I believe we have $5,000 um, in, a, in, a, in a fund for us was initially 10 and then we we have it up 5,000. Through the chair to the board member, I, I believe the 5,000 is, is correct. One thing I will add is, um, <clears throat> and I'm not sure where it is, but it could be a question for finance. Um, last council, we had, um, I believe we started with $200,000 into this investigation. I don't have an update on that number. Some money was spent on the tours um, and I'm not sure where that where that money sits. So there may be a larger pot of money. I'm not sure uh, what the purpose of it's for, but I mean, you, 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 this board has, uh, I would think, the authority to question that and maybe it swings, that pot of money swings into here. So I believe there are minimum 5,000 and maybe, maybe the larger fund available as well. I don't think we're talking anywhere near $5,000 there. In, uh, um, I didn't quite hear what you said, Mr. Chair. Oh, I, I said, I don't think uh, we're talking anywhere near $5,000 there. In respect to the software, um, well, if you got an enterprise license, it might be that. Okay. But that's why I said it may be important for uh, council uh, or the IT department, your IT department, 
to look at that and see whether or not there's, you know, additional uses. Um, like just for clarification, the 5,000 you're saying is relative to anything that this committee does for the year 2019. Through the chair, that funding was um, set aside to have this committee take off and running, and we specifically referenced a lot of the site tours and um, mainly site tours at that point in time. We It was initially uh, slated in the budget for $10,000, and the clerk told us that we would be more than fine with 5000 to complete our tours and whatnot. JJ? Is there a possibility then that we can make a recommendation to council to direct staff to work with uh, Mr. Neville and whoever else on the on the RFAB group that might be interested in working on on this little piece of the project to at least put out an RFI uh, so that we can get some feedback on different types of project management software systems that are, that are out there what might work for us and then uh, bring that back with a number that, that then council could consider? I think that's, uh, that, that's that very reasonable. Uh, if you want to make turn that into a motion, uh, that would be great. So moved. Ian? No. To second? Discussion? Amy? Um, maybe just... Th thoughtfully include that um, finance be included in that discussion to make sure that there there could be some synergies for, and that other departments could use this. And I also wonder if we can just uh, set a date for um, staff to return an answer to the to, to Mr. Neville. Do you think you can get this done inside uh, the uh, two-week turnaround uh, for the next meeting? The, oh, the investigation? I could, I could do it in two days. That's <laughs> And again, time is essence. I think, you know, the sooner we get this information. And that, I mean, if everybody agrees, sorry, if, if everybody agrees with what I've said, uh, then fine. Uh, we should move ahead with it. Now, mind you, if you've never used it before, you're going to have a bit of a learning curve. But this project's not going to be over in a year. It's going to take longer, in my opinion. Um, so. Uh, the earlier you get using these tools, the more information you'll get from them, too. Um, I think to uh, to work with uh, Mr. Ian Neville um, on investigating the right piece of software, and then uh, yeah, re reporting back to council for approval, I think is the right thing to do here uh, at the earliest opportunity that council can vote on it. All in favor? Unanimous. Excellent. Uh, roadmap is our next uh, uh, project tool, and uh, clearly, uh, this we're, we're talking about road mapping tools here. Um, I think uh, we should just wait and see uh, what this investigation brings for the roadmap um, in, in order to actually publish it. But in terms of uh, discussing timelines, I think today we can come up with some uh, some milestone dates that we're trying to achieve things by. Um, I'll leave it, I'll leave it open, uh, well, good, I got a finger up, uh, Ian, go ahead. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I have done some work on this already. I, I didn't have it in a format or at that point that I could bring anything to you today, and I've discussed some of this with, with JJ, so I'm sure by next meeting we should be able to bring, uh, some documentation to you that would be, uh, reflective of what we've done to date.
Um, one aspect that I would like to discuss and through the chair to the rest of this board is there is a significant amount of time during the summer where council uh, is off. Uh, I want to say it's starting about mid-July, uh, moving all the way through to August 20th, if you, weren't, if you weren't aware. And, you know, that should be taken into consideration um, with, uh, with the roadmap, just considering if we need to have approvals made uh, and we're assuming that this is going to come to the next council meeting or next council and committee meeting, um, just realize that there's a significant amount of time um, starting mid-July. And so um, it is good that we have this goal for May for the site selection, but just know that several months later, there's going to be a significant amount of time off uh, in July, and we might want to think about how this board could best use, use that time. I imagine we will be meeting. Uh, committee work will continue, but just realize that the council piece to it, there will be a significant break there. Uh, that should be part of the roadmap, I think, moving forward. Through the chair, I'm wondering if Mr. Cridlin could maybe speak to that or if the committee would be able to provide um, additional comments on some types of RFPs that we would be looking at so that Mr. Cridlin could just maybe correct us with any timelines or dates that we have been throwing around, how long it would take to prepare an RFP, um, as well as put it out and get it back to council prior to the summer break, if that is realistic or not. Yeah, through the chair to the uh, board member. Um, yeah, uh, we have Ms. Darlington handles our purchasing procurement. Um, every RFP is a little different. Some are simpler and, than others. So if I'm to understand this group, your RFP in May, you would hope to know exactly everything you want in this facility. And um, just just explain what exactly your, is this like a, a you're ready to build it at this point or is this for architectural services? If, if, I, if I can ask that, I, I think I've got you, but I want to make sure because the full build and everything is obviously a fairly big document. And I don't know, depending how the next couple of meetings go, if we're going to have that fleshed out, out by May. Yeah, this, this would form really part of, part of the um, requirements update. I think that uh, I have met with Mr. Kidland and uh, we do have some information that uh, will be shared with the RAB group today. Uh, some background information, uh, historically what the requirements um, were to begin with. Um, I've had some input from others over the past few weeks. And so, you know, that information is starting to pull together quite nicely. Um, I think uh, from an RFP standpoint, uh, we, we still have to go through the site selection process, right? And so we're, we're developing that site cr criteria list and um, Mr. Neville is, is going to put a weighting on, on some of that criteria so that we have a, a, a new process for site selection in place. And so um, I believe that when we left the last meeting too that, that we were going to um, somehow put word out that we're open to other sites and and so that the site selection in total would be expanded from what was originally on the list and then it would be shortlisted using the site selection criteria and the weighting formula. Um, so RFP wise I think you, you really need to, to have that site selection right under, uh, well underway. You can start to develop the RFPs, and I think that's what the discussion was last time, that we could start to develop RFPs for things like architectural services, um, for things like um, pre-qualification of contractors for design build or lump sum, whatever way that you decide that this, this type of project would be tendered out. I mean, it's still a proposed project at this point. We have a lot of information that we need to pull together and nail down, like cost 
estimates and that sort of thing. But uh, so that those requirements are starting to come together. There, you know, I would say that by next meeting they should be well in place. We'll have some some lists that we can send out to the, our FAB members and, and everybody can review what the criteria is as we see it and add to it. And we also are developing the questionnaire for users groups and we need to send that out to all, all the group members as well for review and somehow get that out to, the, to those user groups. And that's one of the things that I wanted to ask today was what's the best route for doing that, just that. So, um, you know, we can, we can send out those questionnaires, I can simply send them back, or we also should open up an invitation for those groups to come and meet with the, the requirements working group and do deputations to us as well and, and share their, their opinions. So I, I think that we can run some parallel processes here. We can start, keep working on the, the site requirements and developing that list. Um, we can keep working on facility requirements and developing that, that long list of, of requirements. And at the same time, maybe run a parallel process and, and start to develop RFPs for architectural service for, or at least start to think about that, start building those documents and for a, a pre-qualification of contractors, depending on what way you want to, to go out and build this proposed project. Yeah, I think, I agree. I, I think that'd be a good time to, to work with staff and, and help to develop those, those documents. And as, as uh, Councillor Rabbits has suggested, it's uh, probably a good time for us to continue meeting and continue to, to work towards some of our targets and goals so that we're ready when, whenever the decision's made around site and when we have some further information around funding and other things. I, this might be a bit of a silly question, but I wonder through the chair to staff if there's any uh, preliminary paperwork that can begin as information rolls in from requirements groups. Can an RFP be started and, and blanks left um, and be filled in as the, the as council approves recommendations from this committee? And are we are we able to start with that in any way, shape, or form? Uh, through the chair to the board member, um, yes, that's 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 doable. Um, I, I guess the other thing is, a um, couple things come to mind. JJ, you, you hit the nail right on the head. I think you've slowed things down and we we're thinking this a bit through a bit. I mean, even, even the idea, as soon as you put an RFP out, you're gonna get a product that's gonna take some money. And I, I'm not sure where the group sits, sits with that yet, what council has agreed to pay because with, uh, uh, with, with all council, you know, I think they know that um, you've got maybe a 40, 50, $60 million um, or $60 million facility to build, but you also had need the money for the land and, and a lot of this money ahead of time. So I think the group has to give that some thought and go to council and get some direction. And maybe it's as easy as the money that I had talked about before, if it's still there for this project, you may have 100,000 plus, which may get, an, may get the RFP rolling along, or at least you have some money when you get a deliverable. But as far as to, to Amy's question, yeah, I mean, things like that can happen all the time. Staff can, we can put our committee together, uh, work with Shelley's group and what we have to do, uh, go through the process. And yeah, this can be a, a flowing document. We know we need this. And we also have a, a document from a couple years ago that we got very close to hiring uh, an architectural firm to get this, this started. And of course it, it was held up. So we have a fair bit of work done on that. So we, we could piecemeal this together, start it slow. So at least something in the RFP is getting done, but keep in mind, I think we need to know a little bit about funding and where that stands, I, I would think. And I think only council can, can, decide, can decide that at this point.
to the chair. Yeah, I mean, if, I think you design, build, or, or lump sum, whatever way you want to, I think you have to have that decided before you go RFP. And the other thing is a uh, public enterprise. We have to be very careful of um, engaging anybody that possibly could design or build this thing because preliminary discussions can eliminate them from it. Shelly is an expert on this. If she's watching, she may, she may start texting. But I don't think we want to push too far ahead with that until we know where we're going and then we throw it out to the larger group to, to get our deliverables. Mr. Chairman, I think once the roadmap is in place, all of these things, will you'll see the relationship of how something's got to happen before the next point happens. And, and in response to your uh, question, Councillor, I think that would be the same thing. There are things that are going to have to precede the RFP, uh, regardless of what it is. I mean, if you get the, go through the site selection process uh, and you decide on, on a site, you're going to have traffic impact studies that are going to have to be done depending on where it is because there's going to be a lot of questions from the public. So you want to make sure that you've got all your answers uh, in place. But I think the roadmap will give you a better understanding, all of us, of where it fits. And the roadmap can be adjusted based on how things proceed. And we'll try to populate it as best we can so it's, that it's fairly reasonable uh, as we move forward. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we have a strong indication that uh, we're going to move forward with uh, uh, an existing facilities tour to best understand uh, the uh, capabilities and limitations of what we have so that uh, as we move forward, we know uh, what we're baselining from. Uh, can we have a, a well, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I just get a, a question through to Mr. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Can we get a commitment when that can be done um, within like roughly a week or not a week from now? But is it possible to make an arrangement soon? Through the chair, you're, you're talking the senior center, you know, the facilities we presently have? Yeah. Yeah, on, um, I talked to JJ about that, and, and I think it's a great idea to show you um, just what, what, we're, what we're dealing with. And uh, I work in one of the buildings, so I don't think if, if you got, had a commitment here, I'll check my calendar. I would say maybe two, two hours would probably do it. Uh, everything is, well, I don't think we could walk to the rec center, but yeah, it, it wouldn't take that long. I could arrange with staff, get keys. We could just go in and do the, uh, a very quick, you know, I'll show you where the weak spots are, and then you can take it from there and say, geez, I'd like to see this, I'd like to see that. And uh, that, that could happen almost any time dependent on your, your schedules. I, I'm, I'm open for that. Can we uh, start moving forward with a date this week? Uh, Ian? Mr. Chairman, uh, when you talk facilities, I thought we were talking the aquatic center, the two arenas so far. Is that the, the main group? And then you've got a seniors complex. Yeah, I, I would include, I'd like to show Talbot some of the seating, the Talbot arena, um, the, uh, the, the aquatic center, uh, the senior center, and as well, um, the, 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 the um, facility in Culver Street where, where staff are working. Yeah. And the reason we go with that is um, there is a need for staffing space, and it ties in again to the EMS being very crowded. And I think I can, that's very evident once you see where they work. If staff left that building and went to the new facility, EMS could spread out in that building. So we, it's kind of on the back end, but, it, but it's part of it. So. How does everybody feel about Wednesday? No go? Yeah. Thursday? Let's see. I, mean, uh, I can't make it, but... Uh, go. 
Could, would we be able to set it up uh, for this time Monday? Yes, yes, the 25th at uh, 3.30. Does that work? It, it does work at my end. Monday the 25th at 3.30. Do we need a motion on this? Is there uh, a better time there, Amy? Or? Uh, for me, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would try my best. How, uh, however, I've got a, another commitment in this building from 3.30 till 5 o'clock that day. Um, however, I have been on the tours with Mr. Gridlin, with the exception we didn't go through Talbot um, and the rec center, but I am familiar with them, so please feel free to go without me. I just wanted to make that note in case it matters for quorum. Okay, uh, show of hands, who, who is going to make it uh, on uh, Monday at 3.30? That's six. So we, we, we do have quorum. I did notice Mayor Chop was not here, but I, I failed to uh, record that uh, Kim didn't make it uh, today either. But I'll just, uh, yeah, okay. Well, for a tour, even? True. Okay, well, uh, I'll work with Bill so that we, we can uh, have an a, a agenda. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come up with something this week so that uh, it can be posted. But, uh, you know, let the record show we're just looking at the existing facilities here. I was just going to add, Kristen will probably put that agenda together, so yeah. I think the three of us can sit. Okay. I don't see the agenda as an issue. We'll just mention the four buildings, give a bit of a time frame, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and we can maybe highlight some of some of the things things to look at. So uh, you're correct, Board Member Taylor and, and Martin have both been on basically the same tour uh, without uh, the, with the exception of Talbot, but it, it's it's going to be the, the quicker. It's just basically showing showing some of the faults, I think. Gord, you had something to add? Just curious, where are we meeting at 3.30? Um, where would you like to meet, Bill? If we were to meet at my office at 95 Culver, we can uh, do, the, do that very quickly, and then we can um, head over to the Senior Center. Those two are very quick, close together. Um, then we could do Talbot and end up at the Rec Center because the Rec Center has uh, programming later in the day. So if we were five o'clock before we got there, it, it's 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 open. So I would say my office. Okay, and we'll just uh, use uh, personal transport uh, to move around if we. If it, it's need probably to. just easy. I could arrange for a van, but I mean we're, we're only minutes be, between sites. Yeah. And, and um, yeah. Okay. I don't think you need any special foot, footwear or anything like that. Perfect. Okay, uh, can we have a motion to, uh, oh, sorry, Ian, go ahead. Can I ask, Bill, if, 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 you, if you could be prepared to answer questions related to the background studies that are already been done in those facilities and just point them out then, and are you able to do that then if we had that tour? Yeah, through the chair to the board member, that's that's way I would figure I would walk in and say, you know, we could do the whole, say, the whole rec center, but I'll point out the, the concerns, and I think we have to leave it open if a board member decides he he or she wants a little more information, we, we would work it that way. But I, I don't see if we were, even with travel, if we were a half an hour at each facility, or two hours, I think we can do it well within our, we just set our limits and, and, and uh, make, 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 make the best of it, a half an hour per, per facility. Okay, I think we're now ready for a motion. Uh, can I have a motion to uh, have an existing facilities tour at uh, 1530 meeting at 95 Culver Street on the 25th of March? Ian? Second? Ryan? All in favor? Sold. Okay. One, mo one tour done. The uh, Windsor Facilities Tour. I think I've uh, given everybody the heads up that uh, we have the potential to see three Windsor facilities at once. 
the one lakeshore facility as well as uh, two that were designed by uh, the international uh, pool uh, company, the, the pool installation. One was a Y and one was the, uh, the, the international uh, training center which is uh, uh, pretty much Western Ontario state of the art facility. It's pretty much, uh, well, you know, the, 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 uh, the shining example of a pool. Um, with a terrible site location, and you'll get to see that. Um, but uh, th those three facilities are all located in Windsor. We do have uh, the uh, volunteer of uh, the bike company, right? What was that uh, company? Uh, that, uh, oh, Ride the Bind, yes. Um, they, they have uh, given us uh, uh, a generous offer to uh, support us uh, uh, on our travels to there. So uh, really all we have to do is pick a date and start negotiating with them. And uh, again, uh, I'd like to see this move forward as quick as possible so that we can nail down these requirements. Um, do we have any uh, proposed dates for a Windsor tour? Who all would be interested in going on a Windsor tour? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we, we'd have uh, six for that, and we, we'll, we'll uh, make an agenda for that as well. Um, I'm very interested in that, and I'm sure uh, you'll be coming along, uh, Bill, or will uh, uh, somebody from your staff uh, be joining us? It's probably a point of clarification. I mean, we don't want too many, but I would uh, think from the term of reference, it needs to be somebody from CSD, and I would imagine Kristen from Clerks or whoever, Andy. So, yeah, you would have at least two staff members. Okay. And um, see how much room you have. Uh, I'm thinking along the CSD lines or public works or facilities, if the group wanted another staff member or some extra piece, we could do that. But I think it would be Kristen and I. would We'd leave it at that unless the group wanted, uh, okay. wanted somebody else. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. The Windsor facilities, are they just aquatic centers or are they hubs? Um, the Lakeshore facility, I understand, is a hub. Am I correct in that, uh, Bill? Through the chair of the board member. I guess it depends on your concept of hub, but the, the Lakeshore facility has uh, pool arenas and, and I believe it had the library in it as well, so I think it would, would, would be a hub. Yeah. Yeah, because. Mr. Chair, I think ideally, if we're looking at combined units here, we should be focusing on uh, facilities elsewhere that have as many of these uh, facilities in a complex so that we understand the relationship between how they work and so forth and the benefits of having it that way as opposed to an isolation uh, setup. Well, there, there is that aspect to it. I, I, I won't uh, dispute that at all, but... Uh, also looking at individual uh, uh, aspects of it offers you a chance to look at the best practices uh, from an individual basis to uh, uh, places that have uh, a great uh, uh, hockey arena with the right kind of grandstands. I don't know anything about what the best grandstands are for hockey, but uh, you, know, you won't necessarily see that if you just go hub to hub to hub. It may take... Uh, a, a trip all the way out to Belleville to see something that I'm familiar with uh, in in a hub concept, but I'm sure Gord's got better arenas near nearer to us that we could go to. So um, the reason I brought in the uh, the the other two uh, Windsor facilities, well, the Y will be a hub of of sorts because the Y is a multi a multi use facility, um, and the, uh, the the other pool is there simply because when we're looking at uh, re requirements, um, we know that a pool is part of this, and uh, the, the company that uh, offered to bring, in, uh, uh, bring us into these two facilities installed those, and they're vastly different pools. And uh, the idea there was to see, okay, now you get a, an idea of the cost of this, a piece of our, our overall requirement uh, if we go this way or this way and it gives you a little more breadth of scope that way go ahead thank you mr. chair no I guess I was getting I no, certainly look at individuals that's fine 
and I thought that if we see some hubs, when I say hubs with numerous facilities, we get a sense of the scale because I've looked at the background information on these siting areas and they're all over the map. And it would make more sense to me and perhaps to others to actually see what people can do with the space that they've, they've got. That's just one aspect. So if okay. we can get at least a couple of hubs that provide that, and again, towards the GTA, uh, I know you're going to Windsor, but you've got St. Catharines, you've got Hamilton, you've got Oakville that are close to I don't know all the facilities they've got, but uh, perhaps there's some other consideration. Okay. Well, uh, we'll have to... Uh, uh, but we'll have to break it into more than one day then uh, uh, if we add Windsor in there. It um, just gets all day on the road. But uh, I think we should, we, we should uh, entertain seeing at least uh, three different hub designs as well. JJ? Yeah, I was, I was going to say Windsor is a fair distance, and I think we'll be looking at probably three and a half hours on, on the bus one way. So that, that's seven hours uh, just on the road. And, and there are some facilities that are more local to us, uh, like Wilmot. Um, Pelham, I'm not sure how far away that is, uh, but there are some towards the, the GTA Hamilton area that w would make for you know, much more closer locations for us to go see. And, you know, we could probably use time very efficiently to go and see two or three of those in one day. The, the other thing is that I just want to caution the group that um, I don't think that we should be concentrating on any one supplier of any equipment at this point. Because, as Mr. Cridlin has, has stated, that, you know, if we start to talk to people and... Um, they, they start to provide us with information that they could very well be eliminating themselves or creating a conflict of interest for themselves when it, when it comes to a broader public sector purchasing um, RFP going out. So I agree, and uh, the, the key thing that uh, I did want to talk about with this pool supplier is that he was simply facilitating the meeting with the staff for facilities that he's put in. Um, if he uh, should stay away, then uh, he will stay away. Gord? Oh, with respect to the distance to Windsor, Windsor, that is a concern of mine, just the, the investment of, of a day uh, on the road. Um, a second concern would be, you know, the aquatics requirements are certainly one significant requirement of this, um, but not all of us are experts in that. Um, and, and I don't know how much of a devotion of, of the whole exercise should be concentrated into one of the requirement areas. Um, lastly, I guess in terms of deciding where we go, Windsor is a large city. And Ian, to your point with regards to what can you do with a certain size of property, well, I think that's also uh, in relation to the population base that you're servicing. What would you choose to put into a certain facility on what type of acreage, et cetera? And so perhaps, and I know Mr. Kidlin has, uh, has seen different sites and is aware of others, within a uh, closer geography might be there's a different mix of properties that are servicing a, a certain catchment um, and on certain acreages that at least gives us a perspective over all of the different requirements that they considered and they eventually adopted and put onto their site and, and how they're working together. I think that might be a better focus at this time as opposed to jumping pretty far down the road on a couple specific, not niche areas, certainly critical areas, but the very specific areas nonetheless. Well, we did latch on to Windsor because uh, uh, Mr. Shoemaker was involved with the, uh, the Lakeshore facility. It is kind of on the extreme end of uh, the, the locale. I mean, uh, if we're looking at uh, similar sized communities, Windsor is uh, in the order of 330,000 people right now. Um, if we're, if we're going to try and uh, look at similar facilities in uh, population, uh, I'd recommend we took a look at Fergus, um, and uh, of course Wilmont is uh, a, a nice shiny uh, close by example. Uh, Belleville is a very interesting example too. It's a lot further away, but uh, they have built uh, a, an absolutely beautiful facility right on uh, a major artery uh, junction there, Highway uh, 
uh, well, the 401 and uh, Highway 37. And uh, they've got a facility with four ice pads, uh, a pool, gymnasiums. It is a, a beautiful facility as well. And uh, But we're talking three and a half hours the other direction. So it, it all depends what we want as a group. If we want to uh, try and stay focused in one geographic area or if we want to look at similar population sizes, um, we could be on the road a little bit for that. Amy? I don't have any experience with the brand new Y in Brantford, but I'm wondering about a trip through to the brand new Y in Brantford to Wilmot and back home as a potential loop to get the tour started. That's, uh, that, that's a good plan. Um, Fergus is not too far from that as well. We could uh, possibly do three in it, and, uh, and that, would, uh, that, that would give us... Uh, something to look at. I think the chair, my, my only comment would be um, with board member um, Amy is, or Martin, um, yeah, when staff did it, we, we did the one in Comoca and the, and the one in London. And by the time you travel, you, you're, knowing this group, you're going to need probably two hours at each facility to to actually see it and, and to get asked a few questions. So if you're looking at two facilities, that's four hours, probably gonna wanna take a lunch break, plus you're traveling. I, I, you know, that's probably close to a nine hour day right, right there. And so maybe the first step, if it helps the group to, cause I, I found each one I went to were, were, were different, but you're still inspired. You see things that work and don't work. And, and I do think it is important to, um, the Lakeshore one I'll say is, I think it's almost 100,000 square feet. It's humongous, it's, it's beautiful, but it's probably not exactly what we want here. So I think if you started with two close that you could do an eight hour day, get a taste for it, you may say they're beautiful things were done, or then you may want to branch out as you fine tune. So I don't think there's anything wrong with making a, a, something that makes sense for two very close, get an idea. I was almost gonna mention the Bostwick and the Kamoka because that worked very well for us but I've already seen the building, so maybe we do do the Y and, and off to um, oh, Wilmot, thank you, and, and, and try that, and then the group can decide moving forward. Okay. Dates. Uh, let, let's, uh, let, let's nail it down to just this, uh, the, this one particular uh, pairing at this time here. Um, who can make uh, what dates? Well, no, no I'm, uh, I'm thinking uh, we've got uh, our, our next meeting is the 1st of April. Um, we're trying to advance business here as uh, aggressively as possible without impacting everybody's lives uh, in a negative manner. Uh, we've got uh, one tour set for the 25th of March. Would uh, it be uh, unreasonable to ask for another tour uh, during the during that week? The 26th of March? 27th of March? I guess that works for me. Uh, Gord uh, is shaking his head. Ryan's shaking his head. Okay. 28th? I can't make it. No, I got a bunch of shaking heads. Um, well, that's Friday, uh, I think. Uh, it, go ahead, Amy. Um, the 29th, actually, I will be in Brantford that morning. I could do join you at the Y if the group was able to attend some earlier that day, but I was just going to comment and say that maybe if the majority of, of um, the citizen members can attend without having council members and our alternate work schedules throw your day off, then I would suggest that the group do it and, and maybe just provide a report back to us and pictures and whatnot. I would like to attend, but I don't want to put it off longer than it needs to. Understood. Ian? I uh, concur uh, through the chair to the board uh, with board member Martin that it might be prudent that uh, we have our citizens um, participate in this tour as much as I would like to come. Uh, perhaps this could run concurrent with our council 
uh, schedule. If we, you know, our council uh, members here can attend on a Tuesday, and if that's an available time for you to go on the tour, uh, perhaps it's more prudent for uh, staff to team up and, and do that on a Tuesday, but also keeping in mind that staff, yeah. you know, have uh, duties on a Tuesday as well. And, um, you know, th that's going to put a burden on, on our staff to make sure that they have uh, appropriate representation to answer those questions in council, and they may, they may not be able to attend as well. So I, I'm ki I kind of started this saying, you know, um, maybe you want to take advantage as much time as you have, and if uh, council members can't attend, you know, that's also writing off staff. Um, I, I, I think it's probably best, you know, we could uh, throw around dates uh, uh, to no end. Um, perhaps we want to pick one, s see how many we can get to actually confirm, and, and if we have to change the date at that point in time, you know, well, there, there's uh, always likely yeah, going to be we, someone that can't We've got attend. a number of moving parts here uh, yeah. logistically. Uh, we have to make sure the ride the buy-in is actually available too. So, right. Um, uh, I, I'm, maybe that's that's likely <laughs> probably a deciding factor as well. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's prudent at this point, at this juncture, uh, to reach out to Ride the Bind and, and ask them what their schedule looks like for late March, early April, and go from there for for this this uh, this wider tour. Uh, a little easier to manage one when we're in our own backyard, but I think that that might be more prudent to, to reach out to Ride the Bind to see what their availability would be like for their bus. And I know that warm weather is just around the corner here, and uh, they've likely got the start of their season, and I do really appreciate their offer to, to help get us there, but uh, we need to be cognizant of their time and um, be a little bit more uh, flexible to their schedule, I would, I would suggest. Okay, well, uh, the, like I said, there's a lot of logistics here, and uh, that was my entire career uh, before this was uh, handling aircraft logistics. But uh, um, I was just pointed out that uh, if we don't have quorum, then uh, staff do not have to attend, which means we can probably travel in our own vehicles uh, for this and get around. Uh, so so there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot of logistics to, to work through here. I would just, uh, maybe, maybe what we should do is, uh, uh, just uh, we'll work via email to come up with a date and uh, we'll uh, just leave it at that for now and uh, we'll come through with uh, citizens, uh, uh, we'll coordinate a date and then uh, we'll try and uh, send the invite out to any councillors and if we end up hitting quorum, we'll bring in uh, county staff. Does that work? And. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, do you want to attend uh, uh, in any case, or, uh, or, or is that more work for you? Um, I, I think the invite to myself or one of my staff members I think would be good for the group because they will be able to touch base on the pool programming, uh, certain things like that, um, and, and give a staff side. I think it'll just, just help the group um, going through that. That's my thought. Totally up to the group. If, if it doesn't work, it doesn't, but I think uh, uh, recreational staff there would 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 add a little a little to the tour okay we'll uh we'll, we'll make sure we touch base with you on that and we'll uh rely on uh your your staff to coordinate with those two uh facilities as well uh, when the time comes but first we'll try and nail down a date that uh, that works for our logistics and then we'll uh we'll, we'll touch base with you guys and see if we can put it all together and I'm just making sure I'm gonna I'm taking some good notes here is that the date will come for the tour and then it'll you'll expect staff to just just make the to make the reach out and who we want to meet with so yeah okay. you guys will be the belly button with yep. uh, the other facilities and then uh, if it all works we'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, announce it and uh, if we end up with quorum we'll uh, we'll work to get you on it too and publish an agenda go ahead Sue I just am going to say that I regret I will not be able to attend just because of school commitments. Um, but I do really think that it's important that we have someone from the recreation facility with us on the tour because they have the expertise, the past expertise, coming in and knowing our own facilities so that they could point out things too. Thanks. Andy, go ahead. and um, if Bill or anybody else that he would designate 
wait for you there. The only other thing, was, leaving this like we're, you're suggesting right now, it seems to me that if we're sitting here now, we've all got our calendars, surely we can come up with a date that we can work to, other than sending emails all around to confirm that. Well, if that's possible, we've heard from the councillors that you know, you know, they don't necessarily have to be with us. Mm -hmm. and having said that, I still think it's important that Mr. Critton or his representative be there for sure. Okay, so let's run a show of hands then. Uh, uh, the uh, 26th of March, uh, who can make it? One, two, three, four, and Bill, can you make it on the 26th? Um, I'll, I'll work on council. It's either myself or designate, so you'll have a staff member there that'll be well conversed. So, okay, and uh, I guess we just have to uh, wait and find out if uh, Crystal uh, is interested. I don't think uh, Kim wanted to go on the tours uh, last I heard from her. So, um, right, right. Okay, so then we are less than quorum. It'll be the five of us. Uh, if you can uh, see if uh, the Y and Wilmot can uh, support us on the 26th, we'll uh, try and uh, set it up. Timings to be published. Okay, so that's the the Y, the new Y in Brantford and the Wilmot. And I'm going to take it that um, you're not too interested in meeting any politicians or finance folks or anything. You just want the operational people. We walk in the door. The pool, the aquatic supervisor, the rink folks, that and that's where we're we're, we're better connected here. That those are quick calls, and I'm sure we, we, we can have that. So, it would be really good if we could uh, just see their uh, their final costs, uh, just so we we don't start uh, shooting for the moon here. Um, so maybe if they if they could just uh, give us a, a rough order of magnitude when they built it, and uh, how much it cost, uh, that might be the only thing we really need financially from them through the chair I think those are very easy questions to, to yeah. get out of anybody there so date built and in cost and yeah. anything else we can flush out as, as we go through so okay okay so uh, I guess uh, we probably need a motion on that one right so a motion for the 26th timings to be announced to the uh, Brantford Y and uh, the Wilmot Center Ian? I'll move it. And JJ seconds. All in favor? Awesome. Whew. 26th. Okay, the, uh, the next planning resource uh, was uh, some surveys. Uh, uh, Sue and I had been talking uh, offline about uh, engaging our youth and uh, the seniors to make sure that we're uh, meeting the needs of both of those demographics as we move forward. Sue, do you want to talk about this? The one um, suggestion, but I think it kind of ties into what JJ was saying before, is once we kind of have our site selection and the criteria, but also putting out a survey and using the information from the past travel, like the road shows that are out there, the surveys of the hub, but also putting it together for our user groups and for the youth to engage them on ideas that would be welcoming for them for in a community hub, as well as the seniors, because we do not have a senior, um, well, we do have some seniors, but seniors, sorry. <laughs> But we would like to <laughs> engage others um, of what sites, what they would like in a community hub. So I think once we get our site selection, it would be a great way to blitz everybody so that we could get more community input. Um, well, I don't want to uh, linearly tie it to uh, having site selection necessarily. Can, is this not something that we can start uh, uh, a little earlier? We, we could... Uh, and yeah. find out what they want and uh, you know while, while we're figuring out where they're going to get it I would think JJ yeah so we're, we're talking user group surveys right and and so 
I think those, those surveys, um, we, we have sort of the initial draft out there. Um, I can resend it to everybody on the RFAP group. I think those, those user group surveys will in turn inform the requirements um, work that we're doing, the facility requirements working group, and uh, help us to pull together requirements for such a facility. The site criteria list is, is quite separate to that, but we can use some of the user group feedback when it comes to site selection, I'm sure. That, that that will feed into that, so we'll inform that process as well. So um, that kind of leads into to the next report on facility requirements, and, and uh, so I, right. I think that we need to really get the user group surveys nailed down. And I think timing-wise, we should have that nailed down by the next meeting. In my opinion. And, and that we need to get those out there somehow. So um, if, if staff uh, could perhaps um, help us with what's the best process for doing that. We have a long list of user groups and information from past contacts. So, I mean, that's a start. And if we can get the, those user group surveys out to all those people, the seniors, the, and somehow get them to the youth of, of Norfolk as well, and get their opinions on, on what they see as their needs. I think that would that would help greatly. Um, so that needs to all feed into that facilities requirement report. So I, I can't see us having that for the next meeting. We need to go through those those uh, user group surveys. We need to put word out that that yes, those groups can come to us and do deputations. And so I see that as maybe a process through the next month, April, so that we have the site requirements list nailed down sometime in May. And uh, as far as site criteria, criteria list, I, I think that needs to be developed further and we need to put that weighting on that and, and so that we can put that out to the public as well. In my opinion, I, I think we need to be transparent in this process. Um, County staff might have other opinions, but I think we, we came to an agreement that at least a basic list of site criteria could go out to the public so that they could be you know, informed as to what we're looking at when we, when we go through the site selection process. Well, thanks for that. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the surveys, I see uh, um, groups like uh, the, the swim team and the soccer clubs and people like that, um, they definitely uh, will answer the surveys that you've uh, you drafted up and sent out. Um, I think the, that that's targeted towards those kind of groups, but individually, when you're engaging with the uh, the seniors or the the youth uh, in a school survey or something, you're going to ask them uh, maybe some different questions. And we, we're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of responses. How are we going to collate this and gather uh, group interests uh, as well as the individual interests uh, together and get all of this uh, answered? Um, are we going to have uh, somebody kind of tasked to do this within our group, or are we going to uh, ask staff to uh, uh, be the uh, the information collators? Answers. Somebody, somebody, give me an answer. Come on, <laughs> Amy. I'll just throw this out there. In my mind, I saw the requirements working group um, reaching out to the public. Um, maybe the county providing some um, official advertising that this is happening and this is who you should contact. We can look through partners um, of community champions who've been working on the hub project to help us spread that word. Um, leaving it up to the requirements group to meet with these groups and then potentially setting one and or two dates um, should those groups not have been able to connect, then they can maybe come into a round table session and, and inform JJ and the requirements group of what's going on, provide a deputation if they, if they need to, but um, not 
restricting the requirement. I didn't picture us restricting the requirements group um, to come through council services in any way, shape, or form to get this information. That was just how I pictured it. Okay, Gord. Uh, my comments, perhaps, also spilling over into the next area, which is the fundraising uh, working group and communications. Uh, I was also thinking the same way with regards to communications. I think for the public, we need to get some excitement and to show some movement going forward. So in terms of communications, I saw a few things with regards to the site selection process and the welcoming for any new interest uh, from property owners that would offer um, their, their properties up for potential use for this. Uh, with regards to the requirement groups, um, to have uh, citizens or, or community groups come forward as suggested as as Ms. Martin was just saying, now to come forward and do this and get these pieces out as solid formal communications, whether that's media release, posting on the website, etc. And I would defer to uh, the county staff with regards to the best process for doing that through their channels, but I think that there needs to be these formal announcements with some timelines to them, which we've discussed already, for requirement groups to come forward, for potential property owners to make their properties aware um, to the to the committee by certain times to get some formal notices out there. That'll build awareness for movement forward and also these real requirements for information from the public. As you're talking, I'm thinking about uh, the, the typical uh, Norfolk Services uh, page on the, uh, in the Simcoe Reformer. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, something that says Norfolk's Hub or something. We, we gotta come up with a name, by the way. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we have a, a new box and uh, we start uh, regular advertising in that, uh, you know, the, the f what you just said, we, we have to let homeowners know, not home, but uh, landowners know that uh, the, uh, the site requirements will be coming uh, up and uh, interested parties should contact us um, and give them the deadline as well as uh, advertise. Um, the, the non-conventional or new media, I should call it, uh, uh, go to that website via the traditional media so people know that they can fill in the forms uh, online or drop something off uh, at, uh, at this building. Yeah, they could drop it off at the public library or someplace like that. Um, that that's probably the limit of uh, uh, participation we, we need you guys to do is just to have a, a drop off at some point. Um, we could have uh, some of our uh, $5,000 funding, I think, uh, could go towards this uh, initial advertising campaign, too. Gord? Um, uh, Mr. Matt Terry from Corporate Communications uh, spoke to us several meetings ago. Perhaps he's the best person to come up with a strategy come, to come up with what. Well, Norfolk would normally put out the information required and perhaps if, if he can be tasked with coming with questions that he needs answers to to roll out such a program by our next meeting, maybe that would be helpful so at the beginning of April we actually get out these messages to the community in a format that Norfolk County is, is comfortable with. Through the Chair to Board Member Mayo, that's exactly where I was going. We do have the communication team and it's been stressed us. So that's what it's put in for these individuals to do. So then timing becomes involved because if, if we leave here today and I'll rely on Kristen, uh, I'm, you know, if, if some of this stuff has to go to council for approval, I'm not sure we have to have council approval to have um, Matt attend the next meeting, but that would be my job to tell him roughly what you talked about and have him at the next meeting and move ahead. Um, I think that's that's a good logical step. I just don't know how much information you want next week because, or next meeting because you'll have the meeting with Matt. He'll have to brainstorm a little bit with the group, but you could probably go away from that meeting with direction on, on how to get there. But unfortunately, until the next meeting, there's not a, a whole lot he, he, he can really really do until till he talks to this group. That's my thoughts. But his, his department is the ones that would I think would carry that out. Amy? Could we roll uh, Mr. Terry into our working group and have him chat with a committee member prior to the April 1st meeting to have his questions answered and have something um, developed that can be brought to us on the April 1st meeting? We can then make a decision and send that to council. That sounds like an excellent action item for JJ. Can we uh, record that as an action item?
<laughs> That's why I rely on you, Kristen. I, 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 think, um, I, I think if we got a motion here, it helps. I mean, okay. what I'm seeing is, uh, in the direction, I would probably be the one myself, or I think myself, would talk to Matt and connect him with, with JJ. And, and I don't see that as a big step, but if you wanted to get the motion from here that moves forward, and, and I, 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 I don't, I, personally, I don't see that on this. It's just meeting with JJ. Any business that comes out of it, then it has to go to the larger group. But as far as them having a talk, uh, getting some direction, brainstorming with one individual, I, th I think we'd be okay. As long as you feel okay. Figure out, figure out a, an overall budget, uh, or, or just some uh, an expense account uh, for the, these kind of things at this point. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to uh, to bring Matt in uh, for the next meeting? Ryan and Dean and uh, discussion. All in favor. And uh, he'll be contacting you. Mr. Rabbits is in motion. So I have to excuse myself. I have a Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board meeting uh, to attend. Thank you very much. Good Look luck. forward to our next meeting by <laughs> RFAT. Two weeks. Amy. I have just a quick question. Um, I would like to clarify this before we move on or wrap up. Um, is it, would it be correct to say that the facilities requirement um, survey that you would be using to contact other groups would be completed and ready for this committee to agree upon, make amendments to, and then send up to council by the first, which is our next meeting, as well at that time, we would be um, discussing the communications aspect with Mr. Terry from then. So we would be able to provide Mr. Terry with um, ways to, to get in touch with you. Is that my understanding correct? Uh, I would say yes to that. Uh, I'd love to see the... Uh the survey ready to go and, and, you know, for final approval by this group sent on to council, of course, from there for April 1st. I'd also like to see the, the site criteria list finished up for the same meeting, if we could, uh, including the weighting that we're going to put to the list. And, and so that could go to council as well, because I, I think those two processes need to get underway. Absolutely. And may I say that I won't be here for the meeting on April the 1st because uh, flight schedules have changed with the uh, problems that, that uh, airlines are experiencing with, uh, with their planes at this moment. But uh, I'll certainly make sure that, that that is finished up for that meeting. So, Okay, terrific. Is there anything else... Uh we need to discuss under facility requirements. Status report, JJ. Just under uh, facility requirements working group, uh, is there anything we have not yet discussed uh, today that uh, you're still working on? No, I was going to say that, that we pretty much have discussed everything that I was going to report on at that end, but I'll, I'll give a further update on the energy um, work that we're doing further on in the agenda. Okay. okay. Gord? Just one question, and perhaps Mr. Crinlin can help with this so from the tours that he's done at other facilities. When I look at specific aspects, specific requirements, we know we have some key ones here, whether it's aquatics, whether it's, uh, it's arena, et cetera. Um, when it came to the design of those facilities, who led the charge on that? We're talking about reaching out to user groups. Well, user groups that might be this, the, the hammerheads and aquatics, whether they're in operations, whether they're not they don't design pools. When you talk about hockey in arenas, well, we have a lot of users in the area, and we have minor hockey associations. I'm on the board of the Simcoe one. 
we run operations. We take the facilities that are given to us. We don't necessarily design them. Um, and one conversation I would like to further with them, and I have a, another board meeting tonight with the Minor Hockey Association, I've been in touch with the other Minor Hockey Associations, is, is with regards to specific, specific requirements. It's probably beyond the media boards within Norfolk uh, for hockey, but even as you go up to the OMHA or Hockey Canada, a lot has, is changing with regards to, just to talk about arena specific facility requirements for the operations with the minor hockey. Not that hockey is the only user of arenas, but it is a primary user. So I guess, Mr. Kirlin, when, when you were touring these facilities, when it comes to the actual design and the requirements within these specific features, was it the user groups, was it the Hockey Canada's League uh, that were providing insight, or was it more the architectural firms and, and the design to build experts and the engineers? Through the chair to um, board member Malo. That's a great question. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to consulting and dealing with your user group. So obviously, let's stick with hockey. We've got the younger folks that now do the half ice. So you've got the, um, well, the mats or the blocks that have to go in. So our existing facilities, we don't have storage space. And a lot of times they're at the other end. So part of the hockey coach's first time is when the ice is cleared, getting all that out, setting it up. So. Uh, we would take information like that. One thing that stood out to us where everybody said it would be great to have water at the benches so the water guy doesn't have to run back in to get water you know, during the game and miss this sort of stuff. So you would take all of that grassroots stuff that, that these folks want. You would also, and they can go up the chain as high as again, staff would, actually, would have a say. And um, you listen to them. And then when I think when it boils down, you probably have something that's this big, and that's when you have to just kind of adjust. And I think that comes to staff would have some say. Obviously, this group would have some say, and council would have some say. And then you push it ahead, and, and, and you go go from there. So it does come from the user group. Like even even swimming, I mean, we'll rely on the Hammerheads being our, um, our basic, I, I believe, one of our only competitive teams here. And, and just what they need to run their tournaments sort of thing, where they need storage space, dry land training, they do have a lot of information that, that we could overlook. So, so it, is, it is truly a combination. And, and just at the end of the day, I don't think you're going to be able to incorporate everything for everyone, but you're going to give the best and, and most, most folks understand. So grassroots consultation is, is very important. And the, uh, the, the Aquatic Sport Council of Ontario had uh, a, a great resource there. And it covered everything from the pool dimensions to the change room sizes to the um, number of square meters of deck space required to host regional level competitions or national, international level competitions. So it was really helpful to uh, consult with those uh, larger organization uh, bodies so that you get uh, thinking a little bit beyond just, okay, we need this much ice. Um, you know, there's, there's so much you need to host a, a regional tournament. And this will come down to uh, a decision that uh, staff and uh, the board are going to have to uh, come to some kind of agreement on is, uh, you know, are we aiming for a regional level thing or are we going for the Rio Olympics? You know, we, we need to scale ourselves somewhere on that line and make sure everything is well balanced in there so that we don't end up with change rooms for 20 and a pool that fits 20,000 or something like that. So uh, I encourage, uh, you know, all user groups should be uh, consulting with their, their organizing bodies to figure out, okay, what, what's on our wish list, what's realistic, and try and come up with something in there. And uh, I sent all of the board uh, a draft pool requirements that uh, should uh, really be uh, considered just something to get your imagination going on, uh, on these requirements. It covers uh, everything from the lighting requirements in the building to, uh, to the pool temperature and everything in between. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, that's ideal. In terms of process, those type of that type of information generally would be collected and, and installed as a special provision document in the pre-qualification RFP for consultants when you get moving along. That doesn't mean that's fixed by any means. You can modify that, but generally, when you're going out for your RFP for those pre-qualifications and you want people, contract or consultants, who have done this before. You don't want to pay anybody to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. 
so again, it's it's a process, and again, I think we it's good that we've identified all of that. No. Uh, just an add on to the facilities requirements working group report. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that uh, in my discussion with with Mr. Gridlin over the past week uh, that um, he has some information from past facility tours, um, some information gathered from you know other county staff and himself, and uh, I believe he has copies of that for the RFAP group members today. So. Okay, great. We'll uh, take that and uh, read it up as homework for next meeting. To the chair. Yeah, it was just um, basically, uh, and, and again, summarized notes on the Pelham, Kamoka, Bostwick, and Lakeshore. Um, not as detailed as what I thought staff had had had, had. and also when JJ and I sat and talked, um, put together um, our original project of what we thought we would need for the Norfolk, and then there's other options. It's not by any means um, everything, but it, but it gives you something, nothing's earth shocking. I tried to put, you know, square footage to some of this, but unfortunately we, we never really got to the point where we knew what, how much space the seniors needed. We knew what they had and what they requested, but getting that, you know, can you live with this? Uh, same sort of thing with office space with Culver Street. It's a number, uh, I list on here a 25 meter eight lane pool. That was just the initial thoughts, uh, you know, Chair uh, Paul had talked about uh, a 50 meter, and that's where we would get in more depth with with these folks. So, anyways, nothing you're shocking, but I did put this together to, if if it's any good, if not, it's it's just information we'll receive. Well, that's a great segue into uh, the the next discussion. If we uh, are, are all finished with where we were, uh, we can talk about the staff resource requests that JJ is throwing out. We're looking uh, for uh, some usage reports on existing facilities uh, by, by age group. Uh, um, Bill, have you uh, already had a chance to throw that out to, uh, to, to your staff to ask uh, for some feedback on that? or For both, uh, through the chair, both the, um, we are working on that. I have nothing to supply today. Um, and I'm just wondering if I go to number two there, we talk about time in um, time in service, out of service by facility. I'd like a little more. I chatted with staff about that, and they weren't sure quite what we needed. And um, maybe we'll just take those two topics, if that's how you want to go through. So yes, working on the usage for our age group, it's just a little more, um, little more in depth than we need. But staff figures they they can get, get you some more information on that. And so if we went to number two, the time in service, out of service by facility, just a little explanation on that. I, th I think and we'll, we can get that for the next meeting. Okay, that's good. Um, we're, the, the next item was best practices by facility. That's a little more touchy-feely. Uh, um, you know, anybody who says that we absolutely need this or that uh, has probably got a good reason why. So if, uh, if we can touch base maybe during our, uh, our tour of the existing facilities, that, that may be... Uh, the best venue for that bit of information to come forward. Um, this wasn't mine, but uh, GIS mapping of all existing infrastructure to the current facilities. Ian, I can blame you on that uh, for for that bullet. I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm, all I was looking for there is uh, the opportunity to have contact with a specific uh, staff member, your GIS department, or whatever. I've looked at your Art GIS. Uh, mapping online, which is good, but it doesn't give the type of detail that we really need when we're looking at these specific sites in terms of the topographic information. And I didn't find any information online regarding your infrastructure, whether it's municipal or private utilities. Through the chair, the, um, I believe if you run the public site, it doesn't give as much information as the county site. So uh, I do know water main, uh, sanitary sewer, storm sewer, that sort of stuff are, are on our, it's, it's a layer on our GIS. I just don't think it's available to, to the general public. Not meaning it's not available to you, but you'll have to, would have to sit with Rich Roberts uh, for um, the GIS supervisor to, to let you have a look at that. So through Mr. Chairman, what is the procedure that we would have to follow to get that information? That's all I know. 
that is a fantastic question because I just signed a, uh, a new non-disclosure agreement uh, at the beginning of this meeting and I think that will probably open up uh, our ability to access those kind of things. So uh, um, I, I think uh, if you work with uh, Bill, you should be able to get uh, that sorted out. Through, through the chair, um, yeah, what I'm thinking is if I can connect uh, JJ with Matt Terry um, and they can talk about that. I don't see this, Ian, any different than just putting you in Rich to chat and, and see where it goes and then anything bigger you bring back to the group. So I think I can make that, that connection. And I'll maybe just connect you two by email in both cases and give a brief little what, because that was one of my things SLT had mentioned, how many staff do we bring in? And I don't think we wanted to bring in planners, public works. I mean, we could fill this whole side. So I'm trying to do my best, to, but I, I, I think I can just connect you two through emails if the group is okay with that. It's Ian talking to Rich, JJ talking to Matt, and then they can talk. And then if staff have any hesitations, like, wow, this is a month's work they want, well, then we bring it back and you'll need counsel to say, staff, drop what you're doing to do it. But I don't see initial email or talk being, being, being an issue. You can flush out what you want and he may have it momentarily. Does that make sense? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, that would be fine, like perhaps through Mr. Crisman directly. Just as long as we've got one staff senior person who has the authority then to direct and say, yes, would you please get this information for me? You can pass it on to us there. I think that is my position here, and I'm just wondering these, these reach outs I think are good because you, as much as I think I understand what you need, maybe it's you sit down, sitting down with Rich, here's what we've got, Ian, and it's perfect, or they don't have what you have, and, and I think once, I, I can be part of it, but I, I think the initial contact between the t two of you, because you're each leading part of this or moving forward in your expertise, it may be best for that to, to start things off. But I am definitely here to, to, make, to make things work with staff. That's, that's not uh, the problem. It's all good? Okay. Uh, the final uh, bullet here is topography mapping of new potential sites. This uh, may or may not be... Uh, a suitable discussion for a closed session um, but uh, at this point speaking generally um, you know can we uh, ca can we say that there are new sites yes I think we can and uh, we you know working with uh, county staff to identify them and see if we have topography mapping that's probably closed session stuff so or individuals uh, working with your staff again, uh, Ian, if you want to uh, take the lead on that and work with them to identify that. Well, just for clarification, Mr. Chair, again, personally I have been working on some of this stuff. Uh, the question is, if we want to discuss some of it now, it would have to be in closed session. Um, but I want to get an idea of whether or not these things make sense to the rest of the committee. Amy. I'm wondering if this is a conversation to table until we have the criteria list um, when the group would go over that site selection criteria list anyways instead of doing it twice. If JJ is going to be bringing uh, a list for us to narrow down, then we could maybe couple that. Is topography not part of... It is, Mr. Chairman. No, yeah. what I'm getting at is... No, the criteria, I understand. What I'm talking about is a bigger vision than what likely has been applied to this project. And I say a bigger vision in the sense that, as, oppo as opposed, I gotta watch what I say here, uh, as opposed to it simply being a hub. What other things happen because of that? What other potential things can happen because of that? And I'm not talking about a downtown location necessarily, just talking about those things. It's a bigger vision. And I just wonder whether or not we need to have that type of discussion because, as I understand, the site selection process is open. I don't know. I think we, we may have to go into a, a closed session in order to hash out what we want to discuss in public here. Um, but... but uh, I tend to agree with uh, what you're saying, and it, it certainly no, uh, no no secret that we're looking for economic spin-offs from uh, from this, as well as uh, 
making sure that it's accessible to all in the county. So uh, those kind of things and other, uh, other aspects, uh, we may have to just kind of uh, take into a closed session in order to uh, evaluate uh, uh, what else we need to discuss. Do we want to go into a closed session now, or uh, can we uh, next meeting, two weeks? If uh, if if we want to uh, pull on this thread a little more, let's uh, let let's do it in two weeks then, and that that should be good. So we'll just plan a uh, a short closed session. Uh. Uh, yeah. Well, anything. Uh... The, the the clerk brings up a a, a good point in. Um, the clerk will be there to keep process together. Um, I'm more of an operational guy in this, and 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 I'm not sure the other sites, if if it's infrastructure, it's public works, it may come down to planning matters. I, I guess it depends on how detailed you you want to get. And again, I think Kristen's point is very good. If if you want to go and make some decisions or move things ahead, let us know now, and and we can try to have the staff in place or have council's approval to have the staff there to to. to to, to be there. I don't, I don't want you to go in and us have a have hundred questions a week when Chris and I answer two of them sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we'd probably uh, uh, all agree that uh, it's part of our plan, so it's probably involving the planning staff, right? Uh, this is a long-term vision plan, uh, uh, and the site selection is part of that. Go ahead, JJ. Yeah. Uh through you, the chair, I, I was going to say that I think it's appropriate to, you know, um, have some discussion with the clerk's office and, and uh, talk to them about what's appropriate to talk about in closed session and what's what's uh, not appropriate to talk about in closed session that needs to be talked about in, in open session. So that's why I, I suggested that we perhaps do that in the meeting in a couple of weeks' time so that we and sort through that. Can we uh, can, can we maybe have uh, you as the working group chair uh, um, just talk with Bill about uh, who you would like in the next meeting so that we can push that closed session and uh, then you can work with Ian and uh, uh, anybody else in the requirements working group to kind of just pull on this thread a little bit to see what kind of staff support we're going to require. Yeah, I think uh, we'll Ian and I can have some discussion, and then uh, perhaps we can have the further discussion with, with yeah. Mr. Cridman. Okay. If that's okay. So we're looking for a motion to uh, have uh, county staff support uh, uh, the next uh, meeting's closed session uh, based on consultation with the requirements working group uh, chair. Does that sound right? Not yet. Yeah, yeah. We're just trying to make sure it's recorded so that we, we've got uh, we, we've got it on the record. I think yeah, I, I can kind of line the staff up, and then I think um, just trying to keep everybody clean here. Right? I think probably. Um, we can talk with clerks a little bit too on what can go on and, and can't go on. I'm not trying to sound bureaucratic here, but we just want to make sure uh, that Kristen's fairly new at this and, and a lot of this, the procedure, this is a little different that it's a committee of council. Usually if council's in there, they know that. So I, I think we're, we're pretty safe ground. We'll, we'll talk to the staff and then we'll give Kristen and I some time to, to talk to a few others of what might go on and, and, and can't go on back there. Okay. We're, we're, not, we're not down to... Uh, a site selection no it, it sounds we definitely want to be uh, able to at least discuss some it, candidates and uh, yeah it sounds fairly innocent right now yeah. but we'll, we'll get clarification on that and, and let you know um, as, as early as we can what and what what shouldn't go on in there okay the next uh, the next bullet that uh, I, I I threw this uh, bullet together based on uh, uh, a number of conversations that JJ and Ian have, I, uh, have had, as well as with Gordon Sue. Um, so, 
Uh, the next thing I threw down here was uh, facility requirements, just trying to split up the, the must-have requirements uh, and then the desirables. And uh, uh, again, uh, I'll just reiterate that uh, when you see that pool list that, uh, the, that I sent out, I'll send it to you too, make sure you have it, Bill. But uh, it, it, that, that's, you know, the, the, uh, it, that includes both the basic list and the desirables. So that, uh, and it's fairly comprehensive, so that you could sit there and if you had uh, an unlimited wallet, you could throw that on the table and say, uh, put that out to tender right away. That's uh, uh, really nice, but at some point we're probably going to be financially constrained. So we, we, we need to make sure that we identify must-haves versus uh, desirables and uh, make sure all, all groups have that. And maybe that's uh, something that needs to go in that... Uh, that, that survey if you don't already have it there. And in terms of uh, uh, the, the last uh, agenda item I saw in the facility requirements working group was just um, identifying uh, not necessarily uh, members but uh, interested parties in, uh, in this, this phase of this project. Uh, uh, I know JJ, Ian, and myself have been uh, kind of dominating the conversation uh, because uh, of the engineering background here. But uh, does anybody else have a strong desire to be, uh, you know, sitting in on uh, the requirements working group meetings uh, at this point, or are you happy to uh, have report backs and injects into uh, the, the actual working group? Thoughts on this? Um, I, from the last meeting, we we did establish the group, so uh, I think I think we have interest from pretty much everybody around the, the table. That's a civilian member of of the RFAB, and and so uh, we'll we'll definitely keep all those members informed as as we move along, especially through this uh, next little while, because I can see a lot of there's going to be a lot of information that we need to digest. We need to filter those those needs versus wants, that sort of thing. So yeah, I think we, we have interest from all the civilian members. OK. Yep. Yeah, as long as we're not all at the same time, uh, we, we have to make sure that we avoid that quorum thing. Amy, you had your hand up earlier. Did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say that I really appreciate that this has been a bit of a um, grassroots citizens movement. And I'm happy to take a back seat. And you know where to find me if you need help. Thanks. Ian? Mr. Chairman, and I'm sorry, I missed the last meeting, but maybe it's written down somewhere. But who are the members on the working groups? I know I see the, the head or the chair of each working group. Who else is on the working group? Or are they just made up as long as we don't get a quorum? That's, uh, the, that, that's essentially been okay. the, uh, the, the design is that it's ad hoc uh, sub quorum. Um, so if JJ wants to hold, he, he's a permanent member of the working group because he's going to take all the notes and bring it back to us. But uh, if he wants to meet with uh, Gord Sue and Ian, he can do that. If he wants to meet with uh, Ryan and Paul, he can do that. And that's as long as he kind of acts as the belly button for the requirements, that's, uh, th that, that was the vision. And that kind of allowed everybody to have input without constraining ourselves so everybody can rotate correct uh, as long as we know that there's going to be some sort of a get-together yeah. to discuss those items well again we're talking and that's process what here yeah now. and that's what these meetings are that this meeting here will ratify anything that uh, you know is going to be a recommendation to council it'll be brought forward to these meetings so that if somebody does have uh, a, an extra observation or something to add to it or take away from it, then there is that opportunity. And the last question is, you, uh, you've indicated two working groups. Yes. But that leaves an opportunity open to create another working group as we go through, because things are going to change and they're going to expand. Absolutely. All right, fair enough. Yeah, we're not, uh, um, the, the, the number of working groups is not constrained at two. Um, all, it, all it was really done for was to avoid 
um, having to have a formal meeting every time because if we develop quorum, then we have to formalize the meeting, have a published agenda, and uh, get staff support, and uh, it One makes it difficult question. to move things like forward. To go, through to go ahead. Um, I understand you have been advertising for, is it a sixth person now for the board? So. so the advertising for the sixth civilian member closed on Friday, and I'm not sure if I can say it or not. We got nine resumes, so um, our applications. So we'll be putting that together and um, presenting it to council. Good. Just so we all understand, the maximum number of members who could attend a working group based on a maximum of six public or civil members, what is the number? So currently your membership is five civilian and five council. Okay. So you cannot sit at five in a working group. It has to be at four, including the chair. So once we ha add in the other civilian member, then you could go up to five. Okay, that's just one to clarify. That can... Excellent. Does anybody else have anything for the requirements working group? Perfect. We are moving on to uh, put Gord on the hot seat. The communication fundraising working group status report. I didn't make up much on this, Gord, because uh, you know you and I talked, but uh, we didn't have much to uh, kind of move forward just yet. But uh, go ahead. No, it is pretty early, but uh, through you, the chair. Um, a, a couple ideas moving forward is Mr. Cridlin has had uh, facility tours and he has contacts amongst uh, a variety of different centers. And I think maybe one action item the working group, which so far isn't highly populated, uh, might take is perhaps Mr. Cridlin can provide some contacts or reach out to see who is in charge of fundraising or who can provide some information and insight into a few of these other centers to start to understand exactly how they programmed their fundraising efforts um, and start picking up some best practices from those. Uh, come, so that's one step I'd like to take through Mr. Cridlin is to establish those contacts and get some reports and information so that we can start compiling some information with regards to best practices and options. Um, I, I did come here with a high priority of, of seeing some momentum with regards to reaching out to our community with regards to site selection, with regards to requirements, and certainly these surveys, and we're making good, some good progress on that. So that, in terms of fundraising, I think it's too early to get out there and say, here's the program, but we need to start engaging. Just my two cents and the ideas that I'm bringing forward. So I think we're, we're doing well on that, and also perhaps on some discussions with Matt and Terry, just to make sure as we go forward that we're all on the same page, and hopefully he'll become engaged, or his staff, uh, with our, our working group here and, and our committee to make sure that everyone's working together on that. So it is pretty early. With regards to the, the largest fundraising pieces, which is federal provincial money, uh, my understanding is those applications really, we have to get to a site select, a selected site you know, position before we can start moving forward on that. But again, I'll talk to Mr. Cridlin in more detail just to make sure that we don't fall behind uh, the ball on that as well and that we're best prepared to move forward at that, on those at the right time. Um, so that, those are the intentions going forward. And I think as that information starts coming in and make those connections, then I'll work with others uh, on this committee to, to bring in interested parties to uh, to start going through it and, and making some recommendations to the committee. Okay. And, uh, oh, go ahead, Amy. Again, might be a silly question, but through the chair to staff, is there anything in the um, funding applications and alternate funding envelopes like um, accessibility, um, senior centers, child care centers, and so on and so forth, education, that can we can start um, or place a motion to have staff start investigating, to start filling out, leaving blanks where they may be, or is that too premature? Due to Chair to Board Member Martin, um, I know there, I mean, I spoke to uh, Marlene Miranda as early as last week about uh, child care spaces. I guess the province is still reviewing or changing their world, so we're not really sure because up to that point, I envisioned if, if Norfolk needed 35 uh, daycare spaces, we built 35, enough room, that we were guaranteed the province was gonna be there. Maybe not now, so Marlene's gonna get us more feedback on that. Um, accessibility, AODA, it's kind of my understanding, um, 
funding comes uh, at certain times, and that's where Norfolk staff will, will tap into it. Um, seniors, there are uh, dealing with Eva Salter. Obviously, we have our seniors group in Simcoe, and they do tap, they get fund rate or funds each year sort of thing. I, I, I guess it's, it's maybe too premature to get too far along the lines, but it's something we could think about. They're, they're obviously there. I just don't know if you're not, you know, building this facility and not knowing if you're going to have child care, that sort of thing. I, I think coming soon, but I just don't know right now if it's, it's a pen to the paper thing, to, to, to be honest, to, to you have the bigger plan. Go ahead. I wonder if, um, if staff were to investigate some potential funding options, if that would inspire us to include additional elements potentially. I don't want to create too much work for staff, but I also wonder if um, that's going to formulate other discussions that we might have, which would be timely with the requirements and if well, it would that, be beneficial to know. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I was going to interject that after Bill, but you had your hand up. Uh, one of the things that JJ and I discussed over coffee was uh, um, trying to uh, come up with a, a net zero building. Um, or a net zero facility and uh, seeing if that uh, had a funding uh, uh, possibility. And uh, we're, we're talking about uh, not necessarily a net zero building, but a net zero facility would maybe include uh, some carbon sequestration in the, in the form of forests nearby and that kind of thing. So um, that, that's something that uh, you might want to have uh, your staff look into their bill and see if there's any uh, any energy conservation uh, initiatives that we can exploit and that may change the uh, the site selection criteria depending on uh, what, what we're looking at there and this is where I'm just going to ask for some clarification um, back to, to board member Malo um, as far as reaching out to some of these facilities uh, is there a number of facilities or anything in particular that you for, for for fundraising again not being a stick in the mud i'm just wondering if you're expecting 10 or 15 to me maybe that's more of a motion thing to you know i'm just being cautious of staff time here or or if it's one or two it may be something we can do and the same as the other funding i've written down aoda child care energy and um, senior funding sort of thing maybe that should be in a motion too and then we can go back uh, to some senior staff and just see see what's what's involved with that because i'm, I'm not an expert on on any of that and i don't want to uh, and I'll say what I'll do and, and under supply sort of thing. So it's in a motion, then it goes to council and we can, we can I, th I think it's more appropriate that way. Kristen, do you agree or am I? Okay, thank you. So I, go ahead, Gord. Yes, through you, Chair. Um, Mr. Greenland, I was envisioning a much smaller number. I was thinking a, a two to four, um, well, maybe not two, three to five uh, type of number uh, with regards to you identifying where you have the best contacts, similar size facilities with, you know, as we, could envision a similar number of, of um, elements to them um, that we could then connect with the fundraising chair or whoever that person that person might be in those facilities to to start a, uh, a conversation with basically but certainly not a 10 to 15 type of thing it would rely on your existing contacts and that type of three to five number to start through the chair that that helps me immensely so okay, okay. and uh, with respect to the, uh, the the funding opportunities uh, I, I think I'd like a, a motion to go to council that because it, it is it's farther reaching and I'm not an expert on everything that may may come into play so yeah. if we had that I, I would appreciate that okay Amy I'd be willing to make a motion if you're ready for it mr. chair Are you ready for it? clerk um, that staff be directed to connect with three to five facilities um, and make contacts with regards to uh, reports, best practices on fundraising, and further that staff be directed to begin investigating envelopes of funding as it relates to uh, AODA, childcare, education, seniors, green energy, and other provincial and federal open to friendly amendments if I've forgotten anything. Two. Yes, cultural. Uh, one of the things I was also looking into was Aboriginal uh, uh, engagement. We, we 
we're right next to the Six Nations here. Is there something that we can do to engage uh, that community? Can we tack those on to that motion? Absolutely, and I would just look over to Mr. Cridlin and um, I don't, that, that was a mouthful. I don't want to pressure you by a date. Is there something that is reasonable, like the May meeting, or should, would you prefer to me to, to not put a date on that? Through the chair, um, I'd like to actually have dates because then we know what to work for. I'm wondering if the next agenda could be an update on that. And, and then because, I, again, I can see, um, you know, our public works folks with the, the green energy, our finance folks will play. And I just can't speak for their agendas now, and I'd hate to overpromise. I guess was the word I was looking for and have finance say there's no way we can be there. So can we put as an agenda item that we'll update next time? And, and I've made some good notes. I know Kristen has. And we can then come back and say, okay, you're looking at two weeks for this. Or any luck, we'll bring some of this back at the next, next meeting. That sounds great. So we have a, a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Sue, quick hand. Uh, discussion? Nothing that we haven't already discussed. Oh, Ryan, go ahead. Um, if uh, they're going to be making an agenda item to bring this back next meeting, should we be deferring this particular motion until next meeting? Or is that because things that we do today aren't going to be ratified until council meeting? So the motion. Is that a better yeah, way to I go think, about it? I or? think we have to vote on this motion it, in order to put the wheels yeah. in motion. Yeah, that was the other part that I was going to ask there. But perfect. All in favor then? Sorry. I stepped in where I shouldn't have. She, she knows what you mean. Passed unanimously. <laughs> I didn't get the second, I got Sue, but... uh, Sue was the second. Amy was the oh, okay. 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 Uh, that, that covered both of those. 2019-2020 uh, um, 2020 county budget for facility investigation. Uh, I think we just need to find out uh, how much of that uh, $200,000 allocation is remaining to us and uh, what uh, what we need to do in order to uh, access it uh, other than just ask county or uh, council for uh, uh, the funding is that uh, all we have to do for this uh, allocation do the chair if, if it is the um, for the investigation the money I spoke about earlier um, that was put in place by council, so I think that would need a motion for council because I don't know what strings were attached to it. I mean, it okay. it was for the investigation. It's a different council, but it's still the same investigation, so I assume it's okay. But I, I think a motion to to ask council uh, on that, I, I think that would clear clear that up. It's okay. Um, you know, pri primarily I think it's going to be uh, for the RFP, but uh, a good chunk of that. But uh, that's my gut. But Go ahead, Ian. Mr. Chairman, when I raised that point originally, all I was looking for was what is in, I mean, it should be public knowledge, but I haven't got access to it yet. The 2019 current budget and the five-year capital budget going forward. I understand you have 65 million somewhere, not, you haven't got that money. It's a figure, but how have you appropriated that over the five-year period, assuming that comes to fruition. I just need to understand the financial background where we stand right now. Through the ch yeah, I think we're, t we're talking two different things here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, my, my first question was uh, speci specifically with respect to the, uh, the $200,000 figure that uh, uh, was thrown out earlier. Uh, just how much of that is remaining? And is that uh, all we have for this uh, fiscal year? And, and I think that's a good question to ask. I okay. think Ian or, uh, is a good question to ask too, but we confuse the two. So right. let's stick with this. I, I think it is because I, for one, 
don't know how much is in there and what's been said and what the purpose of it is. And I, I think this group may have some funds to, 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 uh, to do their business with. And I think it's important to find out. Amy? Through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Cridlin, is that a simple email that I'm able to send to finance or do we need to pass a motion for a report to come? I think in thinking it over, maybe a, perhaps an email to finance, James Johnson would, because um, as treasurer, uh, when that money was put away, there would be some type of description. So um, thinking it over, council would probably just look at each other and then look at the treasurer and say, are there any, any strings attached? So I think that's, that, that simplifies it. Thank you for that. Could we ask you then, Amy, to uh, just take an action to uh, uh, engage the financial people on uh, Ian's question about the five-year timeline as well as uh, the current year uh, budget? Sure. I will speak with Mr. Neville after the meeting and get specifics that he's interested in. And okay. That sounds, uh, that sounds very good. And uh, we'll just uh, make sure that... Uh, when we raise this next time, Gord, you can turn your head to Amy and say, what do we got? Awesome. Mr. Chairman, sorry. Go ahead. Again, clarification. Looking ahead, you're going to, the county is going to spend money in 2019 on this project. You're going to get into the study state. You're going to get into some background work that's going to cost money. The question is, as long as we've got assurances that the 200000 whatever it is, has uh, has been allocated such that that flexibility is there. I guess that's what would come forth from uh, contacting your finance people to find out. Because otherwise, we're going to be locked in somehow yeah. uh, and not being able to move because of finance needs. You know, it doesn't take long to spend 200000 on a project like this up front. No, honestly, you know. no, that's... Uh very, uh, it's a very small amount of uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, when Gordon and I were talking, we were uh, discussing provincial infrastructure funding. Um, I, when I met with the uh, the MPP and his uh, EA, um, we discussed uh, the the current round of infrastructure funding. Uh, that's uh, about to be announced is uh, for roads and bridges and that kind of thing. But uh, um, we're still encouraged, I think, to uh, get our request in early for this kind of infrastructure. And uh, this is not uh, necessarily where the uh, the province is looking at this point. But uh, uh, we we have uh, a member of uh, our board going to be engaging uh, the, uh, the the premier. Uh, when he comes to tour in the near future, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll have some nice positive feedback with respect to uh, the the benefits to the rural area and to our aging demographic that this will uh, uh, th this facility will uh, bring. Um, one of the things that I was kind of uh, concerned about uh, was what can and cannot be funded, and uh, as as we move forward with a, a rec facility. Um, for the uh, the benefit of the citizenry, I, I got a little concerned, Bill, when you brought up the uh, the, the, the staff space, and we get, we have to try and make sure that we don't have uh, the whole thing shot down because oh that can't be funded. So we need to try and make sure that we tie that into a baseline requirement. That uh, I think we can, but we need to make sure that everything that we're asking for. Uh, falls under our provincial and our federal funding envelopes as we move forward. And uh, I, I don't know if you already had a chance to look into this or... No, I, I totally agree. We just, uh, from, from day one, there were to be some staff spacing. And, and again, we've always talked about um, capitalizing on the seniors were a great part, partner to have aboard because they would bring some money. I mentioned the child care. I still think it's going to be great because Norfolk needs more child care spaces. And I think as the province, as your um, tenant, you mean the money is there sort of thing. So we're looking into this. But um, again, until... Uh, I guess I don't have the answer what, if it is for sure for staff spacing, but anybody else we had talked to, meeting rooms and, and things, nobody ever gave the indication that it was a $60,000 or $60 million facility, but they didn't cover 
a gymnasium or they didn't cover meeting rooms or they didn't cover a community kitchen it was all all part of it so okay. um, things things we, we can look into as we get a little further but I don't uh, I, I think they're all, all all game for that provincial and federal funding okay we've already uh, talked about uh, uh, you know trying to find those catalysts those uh, those programs like the energy and uh, the, the rural renewal and uh, things like that JJ? Yeah, my regrets, Mr. Chair, but I'm going to have to leave soon. So would it be okay if I give you the energy update now? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so I had some discussion with uh, Michael Samos, and he's uh, the energy expert for the county. And so we're gathering right now uh, EUIs for the existing facilities that we we're talking about, the four facilities. And we're also looking to gather uh, energy use index, sorry, EUI, for um, existing hubs that are out there, preferably the newer ones rather than the older ones, so that we can start to make some comparisons of uh, what possible energy savings there would be. And also in my discussion with Mr. Cridlin, we were talking about operational efficiency so that we could start to develop a, a report around that too. And on the uh, fund funding side of things, um, the county does have a policy about high performance new construction applications going in for any new facilities that they're looking to build or renovations, major renovation to existing facilities. And there also is uh, funding possibilities for anything that, that uh, is carbon neutral or net zero. So um, and that opens up some interesting possibilities for funding as well so that's the uh, energy report can we uh, can, can we delve one layer deeper next week uh, next time we meet uh, and just kind of find out a little more about that uh, um, whether we uh, it needs to be enclosed within the the building or if it's site or if it's countywide um, you know that that kind of thing for net zero yeah that kind of net thing. zero would be uh, specific to to the facility so the, the land including the uh, it, yeah so you you could have solar on the property and that feeds into the net zero equation you could have geothermal uh, to heat and cool the building and that feeds into the equation as well it also feeds into the equation for uh, for uh, carbon neutral so so that has a, a pretty uh, significant effect on our site selection criteria if, uh, if we know enough about this to, to turn that into a, uh, a requirement that uh, becomes a must-have. Right. Yep. And uh, Mr. Samos was working on the county plan for, um, uh, I think, a community energy plan, basically, and in the CDM reporting for the county. So he's been busy of late. But he promised at the first meeting in April that we could probably come uh, together with a, a report on possible energy savings for the new facility versus existing. Okay. Well, that'd be great. And uh, yeah. I do know that uh, just by talking with uh, the people in London, they have uh, uh, 10 swimming pools and their two oldest facilities use as much energy as their eight other facilities. So. It, it does speak to uh, the validity of making sure that this thing is done as energy efficiently as possible. Okay, uh, see you, JJ. Uh, staff resources requested for uh, the financial uh, uh, end of things. Uh, we, we were looking for income and res expense reports on the existing facilities. Uh, broken down uh, however you have it, but uh, we were interested in staff equipment, power, and consumables as the, uh, the, the, the four criteria that I kind of uh, uh, saw that we could start manipulating a little bit. Uh, does anybody have anything to add on that? Is that what you were looking for, Ian? No, this is the, this is your time to shine.
through, through the chair to the board member. Um, we do and we don't. We would work with our financial folks to break that down. And we've just, um, tomorrow night, there's a report coming to council on ICE user fees. And we went into a lot of details on how to get what, uh, you know, a break even point of an arena was and what we spend. So um, we're touching base on this. And I think the report, maybe Councillor Martin and Taylor have, have both read it, but it did take some time to get that. So what I had talked to James Johnson, the treasurer, about getting that, the best we can do is, is again, we're working on it, but I just had nothing available at, at, at this meeting because it, it does get pretty, pretty in depth. But I, I, I have an understanding of what we need because we just went through it for the uh, user fees. And when we took that much further than I thought we would, but it was good because now we actually know it's kind of scary how much we need to charge per hour of ice to break even. Um, so I think we, we can get that information and then you can use it going ahead, how, what a new facility would cost with less energy costs, maybe less staffing, that, that sort of thing. So. And that'll be a great, uh, a great metric to uh, compare against uh, the uh, three to five other facilities that Gord was suggesting. Um, you know, we might, we, we might want to ask those three to five facilities what their metric is so that we can tailor our data to a, com a comparable uh, figure. Yeah, because anybody with a new facility, I mean, it, it's just something they track. Where I'll be honest, with an yeah. old facility, maybe we should, but if that's all you have, You've got enough to worry about. You don't go, geez, what did we spend last month? What it cost us to make that ice sort of thing? Yeah. You, you just, you've got a budget, a budget, and you carry on. But as soon as you have a new facility, then they can compare what the new one's doing. And it's all been positive. Everyone we go to, it is like we, we run two rinks on the price we ran one rink on. Or I love your equation there of 10 pools, and the two worst use two more, or more energy than, than the eight. So there's the savings. But no, yeah. we'll, we'll fine tune that uh, for the next couple coming meetings and, and, and get that in front of this group. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, you know, Councillor Martin uh, early on had uh, changed our terms of reference to look into that uh, kind of, uh, th those, what's that, sorry? Exactly, exactly. So um, whatever those other facilities are, are using for their apples, that's what we need to try and uh, tailor our, uh, our data towards. And, uh, you know, don't, don't uh, reinvent the wheel or get... Uh, you know all of their data and try and crunch it into a square foot uh, per square foot of pool surface or something like that we'll try and uh, use whatever makes sense and uh, gives us uh, the, the right comparison so that we can tell council this uh, th this facility can be this size because it's going to cost us what we can afford okay, so just to clarify I, I, I think I've got you now you you want to know what Norfolk's are and then to go to a few of these comparison comparison facilities and see what 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 they function on. That that that's really what we're looking at. Okay. Uh, you know, we we want to look at new facilities that other people have built and see what it costs per unit. Of okay. Thing. Energy will be the easy one. Yeah. I mean, staffing necessarily isn't an apple to apple thing. Some yeah. some folks may have different programs where they bring. A lot of students in. I mean, if they have crowds of five, six hundred people in the arena every night, obviously that's just not one guy flooding the ice. That's that could be ten staff, could be running concession booths. So now that I understand you, I think energy will be the easy one, and I I can work with JJ on that because him and Michael are on that. I'll do my best to see. I don't know how we'll get a true apple to apples on that, but I think the energy is probably the big thing, to, to be honest. Yeah, well, that, that, that's why I tried to wait, break it into staff, equipment, power, and consumables, because I was thinking about pool chemicals, and, uh, you know, in, in Norfolk, we're forced into this uh, situation where we have to uh, raise the temperature for uh, the Wednesday morning, and then, of course, that burns up a ton of chemical that we then have to change and, uh, and air out the facility for Thursday. So uh, if we look at another facility that has... Uh, a therapy pool and a regular pool, and we can see their 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 consumables use is actually lower, even though they have the two pools. Then you know it, it makes good sense for us to move forward and say, yeah, we need a separate therapy pool. Uh, that that makes a really nice, easy argument to make that design decision. Yep. And again, I, I take it the uh, three to five comparators I, I th is, is okay. Yeah, I yep. think uh, you know we we just have to find uh, um, the, the, those kind of numbers uh, from new newer facilities. <laughs> you 
Ian. Qualified. I'm not looking to build a Swiss watch here. Uh, all I was interested in was trying to get the metrics so that you could take your total operating costs for each facility and equate it into a cost per user or a cost per square foot of surface of ice, not the building, just something. Because those are comparables to other municipalities that you can, you know, you yep. can do the judgment call. Yeah, and again, it's just due diligence to reinforce why you're going to the hub. Because, I mean, I've read your background reports and, you know, spending $8 million to rehab all these facilities doesn't make sense. I've gone through that before and never works. You, you know, you're far better off to just bite the bullet and start fresh with, with a new facility. Um, but anyway, okay, sorry, that's enough. No, that, that's okay. I, I, we're, I'm just linking it to what Amy originally tasked us to do uh, uh, on this uh, board, which was also to come up with that 10-year estimate, and this kind of data feeds both both of those channels. So uh, I, I think we're all in violent agreement on that. Uh, yeah, that would be good. Yeah, Can we get that by email? Sure. It, 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 it's, it's, it's got a planning aspect in as well. It's a public report. Yeah, it doesn't go as far as this, but I just brought it up that it was an interesting process, and when we got in it, it, it was a lot longer than, than I thought. So anyways, no, circulate it, it for, for what it is. It's, it, it gives you a, a bit of an idea. Okay. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I asked uh, about, uh, I, I think it was with uh, when I met with Gord, uh, was... Uh, trying to nail down uh, some kind of demographic growth projections for the next, uh, well, for the life of this facility, really, is what I was looking at. So I just wrote to 2070 because I know we're building something that's going to be a minimum of 50 years old uh, when it's finished. I, I know our planning staff, um, there was a Henson report a few years ago, but when they look at water, wastewater, there are studies done on, on the predicted uh, population increase in Norfolk. I'm not sure if it breaks it down to age demographics or not. Um, I'm not sure where we, where we would get that information because we were bringing in a lot of retirees, and that obviously will skew the, the seniors and a thing. Um, I'm not sure how to handle that. Rather, that's just maybe, I don't think we need a motion. Maybe that's just something for me to, again, to make a couple calls or ask people what... Um, with the growth protect and we planning may have something i just don't know if it breaks it down to the ages but it breaks it down to numbers unless uh, board member mayo has some information i i'm not aware of i'm through you mr chair no i think in the discussions we had and i had pushed out some information with regards to addressing the current norfolk communities and sizes and and the lifetime of these communities I think it's whatever we have we can use with regards to what Mr. Cridlin can find. If it, if it isn't demographic, that'd be great, of course. If it's not, at least it gives us some measure of, of growth rates within Norfolk when we look forward 20, 30, 40 years, et cetera. I think whatever we can find would be helpful. Right. And uh, I know talking to Amy and Sue, we were, you know, um, the, the, our rural uh, environment is going to be changing. Uh, the, the Liberal government just announced, uh, or is about to announce, uh, uh, major infrastructure funding for uh, high-speed internet, which means people will start working remotely um, from their homes, and that's going to cause uh, a lot of uh, uh, changes to our, uh, our rural demographic, I think. Um, I think it's fairly obvious that we're a lot cheaper to live in than Toronto, so if you don't have to drive to work every day, you can live a little further away from Toronto and start uh, uh, telecommuting a lot more. So. Uh, you know, I, I just wanted to try and nail down if has anybody actually taken a, a thorough look at what this is going to do uh, as technology changes, as, uh, you know, our, our county has been aging older and older and older uh, for a number of years, and it's not just the people moving in, it's the lack of uh, kids uh, staying. So it's, it's the young people moving out, and we have to try and reverse this. This is one of those catalyst uh, objectives here. But where are we going to be with this hub? We, we have to make uh, an assumption that we're going to get this hub um, to, to move forward with this idea. But, uh, you know, where are we going to be in 20 years 
uh, with our with our demographics. Are we going to need 300 pickleball courts, or are we going to need 30 or three? I don't know. But uh, um, you know, I, I'm making fun of the old folks because 20 years from now I'll be one of them. But uh, um, I, I I just want to uh, make sure that uh, you know we we've got some kind of uh, projection there that says, uh, okay, if we're going to have, uh, uh, you know, half of our population under 18, then, you know, we, we have to uh, make sure they have those facilities built. That's why, that, that's kind of why I was looking at some kind of age demographic. Uh, and uh, also, you know, uh, we, we shouldn't, uh, discount uh, ethnicity if we can too because uh, our, our society is uh, changing that way as well and that's good. We need to try and uh, come up with some kind of study on this. Try and meet uh, our future population's needs. I don't know if there's a motion in that or if I just gave a speech. I, I really think with with uh, board member Mayo, I mean, we I would th I know that planning document is there, and, and I think it's just a simple question. The information we have, other than that, it's you know it's a simple Google search. We're all getting older and maturing as as a society, and all it takes is one trigger. You're you know we fan shall call you know expands, and and we're, we're we're back with young people sort of thing. So no, I I can definitely I don't think we need a motion for that. I'll I'll bring back the number we have. And it won't, I don't think it'll be that detailed, but it'll give trends for Norfolk. Modest growth, I think, is what it says, but I don't know the number. Okay. Um, the, last, uh, the last thing I had for staff resource uh, was just a, a, a request to uh, look at the, uh, the capital and operating costs of a future hub. Have you uh, done any estimating on that, or have you just taken the, the existing facility uh, costs? Uh, to the chair, I believe that we'd have to um, you know, wait for JJ and Michael Smones to get a little of that information together because, again, it's something I hear it's 25 to 30 percent cheaper to operate. So we could take our number and you know divide it by the, the, the 30 percent. But I, I think we need um, these individuals to come back with uh, electricity being the, the big part because I, I can't see a lot of change in, in operating costs. Um, you're still going to need pretty well the same same amount of staff members. I'm, I'm thinking, if anything, hopefully we build this. We get more users in our pool, more guards. We get more people on our on our ice rinks. Get it. We get a gymnasium, walking path, that that sort of thing. I think numbers are going to go up. So I think the energy is is the big thing we were waiting for in that. So I think it'll come when they get together, and I'll bring that in other information what we have. Okay. Parting shots from Gord? Okay. Communications. Might as well just flip to uh, the uh, last page of your uh, page six, uh, the agenda items. Um, I just uh, kind of was looking for a, a staff communication. How goes it? I think we'll have to wait uh, two weeks for that. We'll, uh, we'll find out from uh, Matt uh, when he shows up for that and just uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try and come up with a full strategy there. Um, in terms of uh, engaging uh, the, the provincial and uh, federal uh, levels of government, um, I, I met with uh, the MP, uh, sorry, the MPP and the EA uh, recently and uh, um, I think we need to uh, work on an engagement strategy for both of those levels of government to, to bring them on speed with this project. And uh, uh, Councillor Martin, uh, I think uh, uh, we, we need to uh, figure out some method. I'm, it may be politician to politician um, uh, in order to uh, convince them, but uh, uh, we, we did have some challenges uh, thrown back at us with the, the uh, provincial uh, discussion. And uh, one of the key things that I think we should try and uh, discuss is, because uh, uh, I know this is going to come up again and again, is how is this hub in the, that's going to be located in Simcoe 
going to guarantee that my particular arena, ball, diamond, soccer pitch, what you name it, uh, in my portion of Norfolk County is not going to be shut down. And uh, this, uh, this, the centralization of a center of excellence um, can't impact our distant rural uh, communities. So we need to uh, uh, strategize on this and figure out uh, how to best answer that question and uh, make sure that we're not alienating our, uh, our uh, I'm one of them. Uh, you know, I live 25 minutes from town here. Um, you know, we, we have to make sure that uh, uh, all, all of Norfolk can roll in behind this project and uh, not feel, be, be afraid of losing uh, a Langton Arena or a, uh, a, you know, a ball diamond in uh, Port Rowan, that kind of thing. So uh, uh, just get us all thinking about that and uh, try and figure out a way that we can prevent this. Amy, go ahead. I might just put this out there right now for anyone who's listening in or watching at home. Uh, this current facility that we're fighting so hard for and working overtime for right now has only ever discussed uh, replacing infrastructure that exists in Simcoe. We haven't gotten as far to say, let's put six rinks into this facility. Uh, so what we're talking about as it stands right now just provides the same services um, that we are offering to our community members rink wise if we're looking at uh, other people being concerned about losing a rink we would be we would be replacing what Simcoe currently has uh, might be a different conversation when we get back our requirements list and, and we learn about the benefits and the cost efficiencies of including more but for anyone listening at home right now who's had those those thoughts this facility is has has only just begun on on providing the same services we already offer but just improving them thank you okay um, citizen engagement I think we've uh, we're working on that um, the public voice of the uh, advisory board here uh, I've been interviewed a couple of times uh, I would encourage uh, uh, us all to kind of speak from the same sheet. So uh, anything that we've uh, discussed here, we're clearly discussing this in public right now. But uh, if it comes down to uh, uh, having to be interviewed and in that, I'm perfectly willing to, uh, to, to act as the, uh, the, the belly button for this project at this point. Uh, and uh, if anybody needs to speak to uh, the press, please uh, just uh, make sure that uh, we're speaking with uh, our one voice as we are moving forward. Is there anything else we need to talk about communications wise? Ian. We do have an action item agenda, so that's uh, uh, you, you asked a very timely question. It reminded us to uh, pull this out. Does anybody else have anything to discuss before we review the action item agenda? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the. Uh, First uh, open item is uh, the application process for a replacement member, initialized the 14th of January, and uh, the posting was closed March 15th, so I expect that uh, Council will have uh, somebody new for us in the not-too-distant future. The uh, next one is, uh, I, uh, I don't think there's anything that we need to do on that other than monitor that particular action item, so we'll leave that open. Um, 
the, the next one is a recommendation for a communications plan for fundraising. Uh, I think we're still uh, a little ways away from that, as uh, uh, Gord said. So I think we'll just uh, defer that one. We'll keep it on the uh, action items, and uh, we'll just hold that. Uh, next action item, site selection criteria. Uh, we're well underway on that, and uh, we'll follow up uh, at the next meeting on that. Uh, project map and timelines. Again, uh, we're waiting on uh, Ian's software, and then we'll, uh, we'll be able to sit down and really uh, delve into a, a more granular uh, timeline. Uh, the central repository for sharing documents between members. Ian raised it again, but uh, it's, uh, it's been open for a while. Um, it says here, requires a motion for council for IT to look into. Where do, where do we stand on this right now? Yeah, so I had put that down there, but with all of the um, project management software talk that we've had today, I think that we should just defer this and see if anything comes out of sharing documents through that and then we do have a motion I believe we did pass one to have IT and staff look into project management yeah to work with the, right and yeah. report back so I think that's kind of encompassed in this okay together very good uh, action item eight uh, contact parties previously notified regarding expressions of interest in the property and okay go ahead yeah Yes, yeah, so that came out of the um, last meeting after in the open session after the closed session, um, and the minutes staff will be directed after the minutes are passed at the next council meeting. So I'm not sure where. Um, I believe that would be Shelley Darlington. Shelley Darlington would be sending out those notifications, but um, I'm not sure where she's at with that. I don't think she has had formal direction to do it. So, and if Sue's leaves leaving then we are under quorum so we should probably close yeah we're just about finished okay. here sue are you heading out uh okay uh that uh that pulls us down uh below quorum uh, so we'll just uh I, i've got uh about three words here let me just make sure i got it here the, the, uh, if we can uh, finish with those action items, uh, the final issue is uh, adjournment. So uh, do I have uh, a motion to adjourn this meeting? Thanks. Ryan, Ian, and all in favor? 